So I would like to tell you that what happened was from day one, we really wanted to develop cancer screening tests. I went to sleep and I came up with some interesting dream and had the idea, no, that's not what happened. Actually, what happened was we wanted to understand the basic biology of cancer. But in order for us to do so, we thought we needed to have a technology that can look at the nanoscale. And what we did was we combined a traditional microscope with a spectroscope, and that's the breakthrough. It's called partial wave spectroscopy, which allows us to look at the nanostructure of cells, which is really a breakthrough, because up until now, we've only been able to look at cells at the micro level. Then we decided to do some very simple animal study. And we started seeing something really weird. Almost every single cell we looked at did not seem normal in animals who went on to develop cancer. And everybody knows that cancer is not going to grow from each and every cell. That's when we realized that actually what we're looking at is field carcinogenesis. What this test can detect is one of the very fundamental properties of a cancer cell, the ability to change their genomes. No other test in contemporary medicine or biology can do this because of the resolution limit of microscopy. That's why nobody has ever observed this effect. Then it was kind of no-brainer to say, okay, well, we can use this for diagnostics of cancer. Early cancer detection saves lives. Cervical cancer is a great example. It used to be number one cancer in the United States, and right now cervical cancer is number 14 on the list. We didn't come up with a magical drug. What we learn how to do is to do pup smear. Why is pap smear really successful? Because it's minimally invasive, it's extremely inexpensive, and it's done as part of the annual physical exam. When people think about cancer, they always want to go into where the cancer forms, right? In case of pap smear, it's very easy. You can just brush the cervix. And in case of lung, people would think, I need to brush the lung, but no one is going to do that every year. What we are advocating is you don't have to scratch or brush your lung. You can brush an easily accessible part. As soon as you do that, the compliance rate would immediately shoot up. We have data in eight types of cancer so far, and this test seems to work across the board. Pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer. We can just go down the list and try to eliminate one cancer at a time. Nobody has ever been so close to making such a significant dent on cancer mortality. We face a lot of challenges, but the way in which we motivate is by this simple thing. Each day this test gets delayed. To be on the market, there are X number of patients who die. We are trying to save lives.